McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop, Episode 19, The Man from the Train Car. September 27th, 1921, continued. As soon as I saw the destruction of the train car and the absence of the little wooden man, I ran to fetch Ariana. Maud, she said, you look like you've seen a ghost. It's the train car, I said. She frowned at me. That thing again? Maud, what's... I took her by the hand, because she wasn't moving fast enough for me. I dragged her across the pawn shop, and we stopped in front of the demolished train car. No, Ariana breathed. She had to sit down. Her reaction was strong, and it frightened me, almost as if she knew something I didn't. Ariana grasped my hand and looked down at the destruction. Where is the little man? she said. Not here. Who did this? Ariana said. She turned her face towards me, eyes scared. Someone else was in the pawn shop last night, and they did this. We weren't alone. And they stole the little wooden figurine. Ariana, I said. I don't think it was a wooden figurine. What? I think, I said. I think it was a real human soul. I think I let them go last night. I held the train car in my hands and I said out loud, I wish you were free, because at the moment I did. If there really was a human being in there, how sick and cruel would that be? But now that person, whoever they are, is loose. Ariana squeezed her eyes shut. They stayed shut for a very long time. I wondered what she was thinking. Do you think they're still in the pawn shop? She whispered. They might be. I whispered back. She looked over at me accusingly. How could you have let him out? I think that's it, I said. I think this is the power Mr. McGillicuddy said I had. He said he couldn't tell me what my power was that I had to discover it on my own. But I think I have discovered it. I think I can undo enchantments just by talking to them. Ariana stared at me, her eyes grave. That's a very dangerous skill, Maud. Yes, I said. Ariana put her chin in her hands. No wonder the night enthusiasts want you so badly. At that moment, we heard a sound. The pawn shop wasn't due to open for another hour. We were supposed to be quite alone. But unless the mummy had decided to go for a stroll, then there was someone else in the pawn shop. We heard their footsteps on the stairs. Hide! Hide! Ariana said. We scrambled for cover. Ariana gestured to a large wooden wardrobe, and we climbed inside as silently as we could. She held the door and closed it slowly leaving half an inch of light. A few minutes later, someone entered the room. They were whistling. From the weight of the footsteps, I guessed it was a man. By now, I had my suspicions on who was strolling through our pawn shop, and I wanted to see. Light came into the wardrobe from a tiny keyhole, and I squatted down so that my eyes were level with it. My view was not good, but I could see enough. The whistling man walked across the keyhole's path, and my stomach curdled at the sight. It was a man, six feet tall, wearing a black coat. The coat had red horizontal stripes on it, and the man wore fingerless gloves and a top hat. He looked like a circus performer. He walked with a slight limp, but his shoulders were buoyant, as if he was happy. I couldn't see his face but I mentally began to beg him to turn around. I needed to see his face. I would know, somehow, if this was the man from the train car, if I saw his face. Well, he turned around, and even Ariana could have told you who he was. Half of his face was still made of wood. From his scalp to the bottom of his left cheek, the man's face was like a puppet's. It was slightly carved, like the face of Pinocchio, 
and you could see the spiraled grain of the wood. He had a garish, false eye that whirred around inside the wooden half of his face. The eye was painted with red eye shadow and furry, false eyelashes. It wasn't even a human eye. It was the eye of a puppet. It spun sideways, mad, as if searching the room for Ariana and I. I didn't breathe. How could I breathe? The man continued to whistle, and then he struck the side of his head. The wooden eye snapped back into an upright position. It blinked right at me. Whistling low, the man from the train car left our floor of McGillicuddian murders and climbed to the floor above us. Ariana, I whispered, did you see? It was him, wasn't it? Ariana said, in a tone of dread. Maud, we need to leave. I agree, I said. Do you think he'll still be here when we get back? She said. I didn't know why she was so afraid, unless she'd also seen the eye. I think he'll be here, or out in the street, terrorizing everything with his wooden eye. He has a wooden eye, Ariana whispered. All right, she hadn't seen his monstrous physique. Why was she so frightened? He might not be an enemy, I said. She paused. That's true. I'm sorry, Maud. There's just something about hiding in a wardrobe that makes that makes a person feel afraid. And I can't help feeling. Well, if he was trapped in that wooden train car, don't you think he deserved it? I cast Ariana the evil eye from across the dark wardrobe. No. I think he ran into the wrong people. Probably the night enthusiasts. And they didn't like him, so they cursed him. Ariana, good people would never punish someone like that. Whoever he is, he got on the wrong side of the bad guys, which probably makes him a good guy, or at the very least, a victim. I paused. I was starting to feel ashamed of myself. Who was this man that I was judging him so harshly? I wanted to run away from him, simply because his eyeball scared the living daylights out of me. Well, let's go. Ariana said. Please. I nodded. All right. The park, Ariana said, where we met. I need to talk to you. I felt suddenly concerned, but I agreed. We both teleported out of the wardrobe, and in a few seconds, we were both standing in the park. I hurried up to her. Ariana, I said. I can't stay here. Why did you want to come here first? Maud, she said. I've got to go somewhere, alone, just for this afternoon. Is that all right? I'm sorry, I'll come back this evening. Come back where? Well, she said, let's go back to the pawn shop. If he's still there, we'll figure something out. I squinted at Ariana. I'm all right, she said. I'm sorry, I'll explain later. Will you be all right for the day? Of course I'll be all right, I said. Good, she said, and she teleported. I was left alone. I went and sat on the bench, feeling restless. The truth was, I had been meaning to try something for a while. With Ariana, there'd always been someone there to talk me out of it. Well, now there was no one there to talk me out of it. I wanted to try to find Noble James. I wanted to see if he was still alive. One of the worst places in the city for me was probably a hospital. When you're not supposed to be in a hospital, you get noticed. And I couldn't afford to get noticed. But still. It had been itching at me for days, and with Ariana gone, the temptation was too great. The closest hospital to the Iron Lion Bridge, where Noble James had been stabbed, was St. Luke's. I took a deep breath, and I teleported there. As I teleported, I felt the words show up clearly in my mind. Saint Luke's. I arrived on the sidewalk in front of the hospital. I stared up, and I wondered if I was making a terrible mistake. Just then, a man brushed past me in the crowd and slipped a paper into my hand. Startled, I looked up. 
but he disappeared into the sea of heads. I stood in the middle of the busy crowd, and I looked down at the note in my hand. It said, The man from the train car is a murderer. You must stay away. We hope you've enjoyed episode 19, The Man from the Train Car, of McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop. McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop is written and performed by Minerva Sweeney Wren, all rights reserved. Please subscribe, share it with your friends, and support Minerva Sweeney Wren at patreon.com slash Sweeney Wren. McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop will continue next week with episode 20, The Deathbed of Noble James. <laughs>